G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again for the third part of the Databases series. In this video, we're going to have a look at two different things. We're going to look at editing the student data, and we're also going to look at viewing marks in an ordered rank. So we're actually going to rank them from their highest mark to their lowest mark and display them. Now this isn't particularly a difficult video, it's just really understanding what you're doing. The edit student is by far the simplest, but Jesus Christ, it's long. So let's just create some subs and get right into this bad boy. So let's create a sub for edit student and create another sub for view ranked marks. All right, and before we code these guys, we're going to jump back up to the menu and we are going to add them in as options. So let's copy this guy twice. Let's make an F and a G option. Can you see now why I used X as the exit? Edit student is F, which makes heaps of sense because E is delete. Um, and then view ranked marks. Okay, let's add them to the if statement and we're ready to start coding. One, two, F and G. And that one's edit student and this one is view ranked marks. All right, pause the video if you need some time to do it because I'm going to jump straight into edit student and we're going to go from there. Right. So, jump down, let's make a few spaces. And pretty much we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done for the last couple of functions. We're going to view the students, we're then going to get the ID from the user, and then we're going to edit that ID. Okay? Now when we're editing that ID, we're first of all going to have to get the details that the student currently has. Because we're going to give them the option to not enter any new details as well. Let's say they didn't stuff up the first name and they didn't stuff up the last name, but they stuffed up the date of birth. So we don't want to have to retype in the last name and the first name, and then have to put in the date of birth. So we're going to allow them to just keep them blank and change just one of them. So, and then we're going to ask for the new details. We're going to check if they've updated any of them, and then we're finally going to update the database with the new information. So, first step: let's grab from the if statement up in deleted students, copy, come back down, and bam, ready to go. So, let's quickly grab the current details from the database. Very straightforward, let's create our query as a string equals select asterisk because I want all the fields from students. Now, we're going to put the where clause is ID equals and the ID they selected. Okay, so select the star from students where ID equals ID. Create your command, ABLEDB command with a Q and a connection. And then finally, because we're getting data out of the database, we need a reader. As OLEDB reader equals cmd execute reader. Apologies if I'm going too quick, but you can always pause, type it up, and let's keep going. So we need to grab the first record. Realistically, we should only get one, and hopefully we do get one, because otherwise, as you saw in the last video, this will cause an error. If we don't, let's create some storage space for our new variable. So dim the first name. What the hell was that? Dim the last name. Dim the date of birth. And let's get cracking ask for the details. Let's put a nice little message at the top. Let's put an empty right line because I like that at the top. Let's say, what I'm going to ask is entering the new details for the student. And I'm actually going to print the existing details up there. Okay. So enter new details for, and then we'll do their first name and last name like we've done in the past. Reader, first name, and a space, and reader last name. Now this is going to look a little bit awkward, but I'm going to put the date of birth in brackets so all the information is there for the user of the program. So date of birth, reader, DOB, and then I need to close the bracket inside my text. So I need to go ampersand and bracket end. Wow. Pause the video if you want to copy that out. Basically it should just say, like if I select Bobby, it should say Enter new details for Bobby, Bob, and then his date of birth in brackets. All right, that'll just look fairly neat for them. And I'm also going to say, just here, just a few asterisks so it's like a note. Oh, actually, I could just write note, couldn't I? Note. Uh, hmm, what should I say? Press Enter to skip changing any details. I hope that makes sense. Anyway. It will or it won't. Okay, now let's finally get the details. So, console.write 
first name and then first name equals the read line so they will have the option of just pressing the enter key and if they do for first name or last name or date of birth it means that this is just going to be empty so we're going to keep on going in this fashion so console I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste sorry copy these two bam enter bam first name last name and then date of birth change these guys to last name and this guy date of birth all right we're halfway there next thing check if they skipped any details so what we're going to do is we're going to check if any of these strings or the date of birth are their default values if they are their default values then we simply grab the original information so what I mean by that if they just press enter for first name it means this variable will be an empty string if it's an empty string I'm going to make first name equal the readers first name and that way if I don't change the name for Bobby Bob it means we're just going to grab the original Bobby name and put it back in the first name so nothing really changes even though we're telling the database to update it nothing is going to change this isn't the best way to do update details but it's going to be the quickest and probably the nicest way for the moment so if the first name equals nothing then first name equals the reader first name just like so as we come down if the last name oh, again I'm going to copy and paste it because I'm lazy last name last name last name oh my god I did it again and then the date of birth is a little bit different because date of birth is not a string it's a date okay so we need to go if date of birth equals a new date okay then date of birth equals the date of birth all right so basically we're saying if date of birth is the default value and a default value for a date is a new one if that makes sense because when you create a new date it's going to have a default value in it so if this date reflects a brand new one then they haven't changed it so we just use that okay doke. let's go I hope that works I haven't really fully tested it so tell me if it stuffs up update the database let's create our new query string because I've already dimmed Q up the top here we're going to do a new one and let me show you the format of an to update a database you do update the table name um, and then you go set the column name equals the value and then you go where and your condition okay so that's the format we're going to write it in so Q equals update students because that's the table name and I'm just going to put on the next line because it looks neater set and we have three columns we want to update we have first name last name and date of birth so let's just type that in first name equals and then we need apostrophes because it's a string so quote quote ampersand ampersand first name in the middle all right and then we put a comma after that apostrophe just there put an ampersand and I'm going to go to the last name field same thing last name which is a column name equals apostrophe apostrophe and then a comma after it so let's go in between the apostrophes quote quote ampersand ampersand last name sorry if these look really ugly and then we go finally date of birth equals apostrophe apostrophe no comma after the guy but we put quote quote ampersand ampersand <laughs> date of birth okay and then finally we need the where clause so make sure you've got a space there so update these three fields where the ID equals the ID they selected at the top so execute this bad boy and because we're not expecting anything to return we do not need a reader now notice that I've just got command equals that's because we've already declared CMD up the top and we can reuse him execute an on query and we are done I knew that took a little while test him out let's see if we can edit our database let's go to F edit student um, I'm gonna edit Jill let's say she changed her name so let's go Jill I should have probably changed that but anyway Steven and she was born when was her date I selected the sixth of the ninth let's say I stuffed up and it was the fifth of the ninth 14 view the students Jill Stevens fifth of the ninth perfect right if you need to pause the video and catch up or whatever do that now because we're going to jump straight into view highest marks okay
So let's go to view ranked marks. Sorry, change the name of it. First thing we're going to do is build the query string because basically we're not going to ask for, you know, what student they want to look at. We're grabbing every single mark that's in our database and we're going to rank them by their highest to their lowest. So the only thing that I'm really introducing with this function is ordering data that's returned from a query. Now, what I'm going to do, this is very similar to when we got, where is it, when we viewed the student's mark. So I'm going to jump to this guy, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to steal all this code from build query string to closing the reader. So highlight all this stuff, so from build query string down to console read line, copy that. So don't worry about this view students and the ID stuff because we're not going to do that anymore. And let's paste him right here. All right, and let's edit this bad boy up. I'm going to get rid of this formatting thing. Now we're not selecting an ID either. So let's get rid of this ampersand ID. We're also going to get rid of the where clause. All right, get rid of all that. And what that's going to do is it's going to return every single student with their associated mark next to their name which is fantastic. So every record will have the first name, last name, assessment name, and mark in those four fields, which is really, really handy. The last thing that we're going to add on the end of the query, however, is to order it. We're actually going to ask that instead of us going through and sorting them using bubble sorts or anything like that, we're going to use the database's power to sort these by the highest mark. Okay? And you use that with the order by command, and then you have the field name, which in this case is marks.mark, and then after it, you either put ASC for ascending or DESC for descending. Now, we actually want descending because what that's going to do is order it by the highest to the lowest mark. Okay? And that's when you would use descending. Ascending will put the lowest mark to the highest mark for us. Okay. So the execute and read is fine because that's exactly what we want to do. And what we are going to do, however, is we're going to get rid of this guy. Okay, all of our reading is going to be performed back in the while loop. So let's get rid of him. Okay, let's get rid of these two guys because we don't, we're not going to list the student name and then the mark. But we should say all marks from highest to lowest. Okay, so I've gotten rid of that initial because I don't want to read the first record anymore. I just want to read all of them in one hit. And I'm going to modify this console write line inside here because we're reading each record in here and I'm going to format it completely differently. I'm going to have 20 spaces for the first name, 20 spaces for the last name. I'm then going to have another 20 spaces for the assessment name and then finally four spaces for the mark. Okay, so the first field is right here and I'm going to go on the next line. So this is reader first name. Again, you can keep it on the same line. You don't have to copy me. I'm then going to have reader last name, reader assessment name, and reader mark. Okay. And that's it. Pause the video if you need to do it. This is actually going to be where I stop and test, and this might be where I leave the video. So let's press play and try them out. So view ranked marks, starting at 98, working all the way down. Jill's the winner by far with her exam. Okay. I hope all that made sense. I hope you learned a little bit about ordering things. I probably should put a console.clear just here, shouldn't I? Ah, it's a bit better. Cool. I hope you learned something about ordering marks. I hope you learned something about, you know, editing data in a database. And I hope you learned a little bit from these videos. The next video, we're going to do something completely different with all of this. Now, we're going to generalize our code so it can apply to a lot of databases. It might take me a little while to put this video together, but I hope it's going to be useful for you. I hope you learned something about databases along the way. And if there are any questions or queries or suggestions, pop them down in the comments in below. Like and subscribe if you would, please. It helps me out massively. And I shall see you later on. Thank you for watching, everybody. Catch you later.